you or a loved one have an addiction and not even know it? Health anchor Liz Bonus joins us now with new criteria for gaming disease. Liz? Yeah, this is really interesting. The World Health Organization recently announced that gaming would be added to the international classification of diseases. Researchers say they are concerned that it is fast becoming one of the biggest problems working against kids, especially because activity time gets very limited when gaming leads to a lot of couch time. It is sedentary and it's isolating. Just a few of the main dangers, according to Cleveland Clinic Children's Hospital. The team there supplied this video. They say most often kids play alone or in small groups. That means they are not active and they can raise the risk for childhood obesity and other problems later in life. It is also possible, specialists here say, that without personal interaction and with a lot of time in front of a game screen, kids can have delayed and social emotional development. It simply reduces the time kids interact with others face to face. Too much time spent gaming, according to this Cleveland team, has also now been linked to increased impulsivity, negativity and irritability. Now just because kids play, it doesn't mean that they have a disorder. The disorder classification comes when gaming leads to neglecting responsibilities. This can be either at school or at work. Like any addiction disorder, the time for concern is when the activity reaches the point where it becomes a problem that interferes with a person's ability to function in everyday life. If, as the hours escalate, life quality goes down and it starts to interfere with personal relationships and a person can't stop playing, that is now the definition of a gaming disorder or disease. Now, interesting, they're seeing this in both kids and adults. And one of the reasons they want to get criteria is that if you're going to be able to get treatment, mm -hmm. it needs to meet an addiction criteria. So oh. then you could get insurance coverage, you get counseling, things like that. But also, you heard in their impulsivity, mm -hmm. one of the things that we think is happening is as you play a game, there's no consequences if you shoot a person yep, or, yep. you know. And they're starting to say that some kids play this so often that translates into real life and they oh, don't wow. necessarily understand the impact of the action, which is, you know, some are concerned are leading to actions that make no sense to the right. rest of us. That's Terrifying. And they don't understand the consequences. Yes, and that's why this is really important. Oh my goodness, yeah, it's bigger than you think. I'm going to guess that it's more prevalent in males than females. Definitely more prevalent. They think right now, but you know, it's it. We started with those kind of games. Sure. Who knows what will be developed as we work? True you know, enough. Yeah. And you know, more of us are interested in science, technology, and industry. More girls are developing some sure. of these things that we like. So anything that could sort of take you out of the real world and interfere with your life is, has the potential to be an addiction. Yeah. Yeah. I think Megan Mangella did a story earlier this summer where she, a football coach was telling kids to put the games down because they were missing conditioning or maybe they weren't trying as hard mm -hmm. because they were playing the video games all the time. Yep, yeah, and a couple of my addiction people worked with her on that. Yeah, it's real interesting. We're going to find and hear a lot more about this. Okay. okay. We